years, and I remember sitting down, opening the Bible, and searching for it, and searching and searching and searching, and it wasn't there. To realize who Jesus really was was when I was when I was convicted. It just seemed like it was plain then. The things in the Bible made sense. And the, one of the most amazing things for me was to learn that Jesus Christ was God. That just blew me away. The Mormon Church and the the fundamentalists, including the Kingston clan, their Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible. Their Jesus is somebody that they can become equal to. And how can you worship a God if you can be his equal? God says he doesn't change. Same yesterday, today, and forever. I had no idea that the Bible contradicted Mormonism so strongly. And I began to study in the Bible and I began to see well, God said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isaiah 40, verse 8, you know, that the grass withers. The grass withers. The grass withers. And the flowers fall, but the word of God. The word of our God. But the word of God will stand forever. 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 The word of God endures forever. Um, and either those things were true or they weren't. If God said it, isn't he strong enough? Isn't he able to keep his word? If he said it, he can do it. And that pretty much settles it. <laughs> I went, well, yeah, of course. It doesn't make sense. That's obvious. And from that point on, I believed everything I read in the Bible. And it said, God loves you. And that was where God just took his arrow and pierced me. And I started to cry because I had never heard that before. Never. It had always been God hated you. It's so exciting when you've been raised in a lie and you find the truth, the beauty. The, the beauty of the truth and the the simplicity of it and yet the depths of it when I became a Christian and I were I realized the gospel means good news and I look back at what I grew up that wasn't good news at all I hadn't learned any good news when I was growing up everything that I learned as a gospel as a child was bad news that's why I ran away from it because it was such bad news well the good news is, fo is focused on a person the gospel is a person. Salvation is a person. First time I went to church after I was saved, they were singing songs to Jesus. And I just stood there and bawled. I just cried and cried the whole service. I just, all I did was cry. I thought, everybody thought I was really weird because that's all I did was cry because everything was Jesus-centered. In the group, in the polygamy group, everything is them-centered. It's not you centered. You do die to yourself in one of those groups because you're not a person. It's them centered. So when you get out and you see that Jesus is the center of it, it's just, it's just, it's just so awesome. It's hard to really explain, but it's a beauty that it permeates your soul and it changes your life. It's awesome. I was invited to go to a Christian church and it was really difficult for me to want to step into one of these churches that I've been taught my whole life was an abomination. You know, the Lord just really spoke to my heart in that church. I felt like the pastor's message was directed right at me. And I, before I knew it, I, I was just standing there as we were singing and I was crying, just crying, and I didn't know why. And I accepted Jesus as my Savior that day. I could rest in in what Jesus did for me because how on earth could I earn my salvation since since I have I un finally understood the the sin nature just knowing that I don't have to perform that I'm saved by grace because no matter what I could do I could have never got there anyway not in anything I could do I couldn't have been good enough and that's that's the joke of it all that, that in the Mormon church they're living by. They're never going to be good enough and they're working their tail ends off, bless their hearts, and they're, that's not how they're going to get there. Christ already did it. In regards to saying I, that he would deliver you, was, was he faithful to that promise? Oh my goodness, yes. My goodness, yes. If God says he's going to deliver you, he'll deliver you from everything. He's done a pretty good job, I'd say. <laughs> I realized that the Mormon concept was all backwards, that I was outside of God's favor because of my sin, 
and cut off from God that it was only the atonement of Christ that made me right with God. Now the Mormons talk about the atonement of Christ, but Christ's atonement is not the full payment. Besides the atonement of Christ, a Mormon has to have temple marriage and be faithful to the Mormon church to have eternal life. And here I was hearing this man preach on salvation through Christ that this was the means for eternal life. That eternal life is fully provided through the atonement of Christ and our surrender to God. So listening to this radio program, I accepted Christ as my Savior. A woman is under the law of her husband. And each man resurrects his wives. If you have not a head, if you are not sealed under a man, you have no one to resurrect you. Therefore, you will go to hell. After our, uh, my third husband left me, I got the idea that I had pretty well ruined my life. That I was beyond hope. That I had no hope of salvation. Because I figured I was lost. I was going to a Christian church. But it was only by setting it all aside and saying, Okay, God. It's in your hands. You tell me what's true and what isn't. And if polygamy is true, I'll live it. If it isn't, let me know. And I won't live it. I was in my room by myself and just realizing the plight I was in and just cried out to God and just pleaded with Him to help me, to save me begged him to come into my life and take over because I had made such a mess of it. Everything I had done, I could see now. Everything I had done, no matter what my intentions were, just led to the destruction and led to a mess. And the only way that I could survive and take care of all of my children was to turn my life over to God. There was no other way. And that's when I became a Christian. I was pregnant with my 14th child, very sick and very alone, and there was no other way to turn. But God saved me, helped me, and took care of me, as none of my other husbands ever could. There's nothing that we can do because Jesus did it all, because he's God. The only reason he could do it is because he was God. He is God, and he shed his blood once for all. The Holy Spirit convicted me. All of a sudden, everything made sense. Just like, just like I was in total darkness, and Jesus turned the light on. I could see. It all made sense. And I got on my knees and confessed my sins and asked, asked Him to come into my heart. He did not disappoint me. Before that time, I was so racially prejudiced that I was an embarrassment to my family. I was really bad. I know they, that the leader, or tell the one that I followed, was very prejudiced, and they taught that. They believe that to this day, I'm sure. That was completely gone that night. I couldn't have done that in a lifetime. But Jesus took from me in an instant what I couldn't have done in a lifetime. I realized that Mormonism was clearly Joseph Smith's invention. I've repented for thinking that God was once a man. I mean, that's just utterly blasphemous. I've repented for uh, thinking that the blood of Christ was not sufficient. You know, those things strike at the very character of who God is. And so that's why um, I am where I am today. I was looking for something. Really, I was looking for someone. I was looking for Jesus Christ. And I finally found Him. I was very hungry for the truth, so I started